Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. A little while ago, DJI announced their latest entry into the commercial drone space, the M200. And although it wasn't the consumer drone that a lot of us were hoping for, it does represent a major step forward for commercial drones. Because a lot of companies that have entered that commercial drone space, which is exploding, build very specialized drones that do one or two things pretty well. The M200 is different because it's a configurable platform that's extremely flexible and allows you to reconfigure it as needed to do a bunch of different things. So that one platform can do aerial surveillance, it can do data collection, you can put a FLIR-like thermal imaging camera on the bottom of it and search and rescue for people in the woods to detect heat. Maybe you're inspecting a tower and you've got to find cracks in it and you want to find differences in temperature. It can do that pretty well. If you're search and rescue in a fire situation where you've got it up in the air looking for the extent of the fire to keep people out of harm's way, all these functions can sort of be reconfigured into that M200 that allows a very flexible platform with just tons of technology built in to keep both the drone safe and the people operating it safe. So let me give you some details on it. Now I haven't had a lot of time to drink in all the details yet. It was just announced. I promise you I'll do a much more detailed clip in a couple of days and maybe if I get my hands on one I'll actually do a hands-on inspection, tear it down and do some comparisons with other technologies out there. But for now I wanted to put a quick clip together just to give you the high points of what this technology represents. Now I I know most of my viewers are consumer drone viewers, so you may not be interested in this. I'm going to tell you to hold on because I find that a lot of the technology that's introduced at the enterprise space eventually trickles down to the consumer space, and there's some major innovations in this quad that you're going to want to pay attention to that if I were a betting man would suspect these will show up in consumer versions of quads down the road, probably not that far out. So let me get started with the models. So the basic model is the M200. And what that does is provide a platform that allows you to mount a camera on the bottom. So you can have one gimbal camera mounted on the bottom. It uses the same quick mount as the Inspire series where you put the camera on, you do a quarter of a twist and it locks in. And there's a grouping of cameras that'll fit that. Actually, the cameras that fit the Inspire 2 will fit it. The next model up is the M210. Now what the M210 will allow you to do is to have one gimbal down or two gimbals down or one gimbal up. Now that's an innovation for quads. They've never had a quad that had a gimbal facing up, but if you think about it, you're doing bridge inspections, you've got to look up underneath the girders to see if there's problems up there. Some of these cameras are so good for inspections that you can actually see a millimeter sized crack or a fault in a bridge or in concrete. So it gives you very discrete optics in there that allow you to look very closely at objects to make sure that they're going to pass inspection for whatever your criteria are. The third model is the M210 RTK, and what that allows you to do is to mount, in addition to the cameras, a D-RTK module on the top of it. Now, if you're not familiar with the RTK module, it's a DJI, pro DJI product, it allows pinpoint accuracy in three dimensions. So it gives you an extremely accurate position of where you're sitting. So if you're doing surveillance or you're doing surveying or you're doing bridge inspections, you'll know exactly where that crack is on the bridge and be able to sort of identify it and direct people to that particular position. So that RTK module is very, very accurate and it uses GPS and some other technologies to figure out exactly where it's sitting in a 3D space. The quad itself is also weather resistant to an IP43 standard, which means it can be out in the rain, it can take a hosing, it can't be immersed, but for all intents and purposes, it's weather resistant and water resistant, which makes it extremely durable because a lot of times these inspections have to happen whether it's rain or shine. So you can put this quad up in, in messy weather and actually use it. From a technology perspective, there's a couple innovations that are built into this that, again, I think are going to be beneficial for consumer drones down the road. First off, it's got a dual battery system, and the dual batteries are hot swappable. What that means is, if you're flying and you're coming down, you can keep the quad powered up, slide out one battery, slide in a fresh one next to it, as long as that first battery is still making contact. When that second battery charges, you can pull that first battery out and put a second one in, so you can actually hot swap the batteries. The reason that dual batteries are important is because of redundancy, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. There's a ton of redundancy built into this quad. But having two batteries in the quad mean it doesn't happen, but if a battery were to fail, normally a quad would come out of the sky because that's a single point of failure. In this case, you've got two batteries. So if one of them fails, the second one will still keep the quad up and give you time to land it and actually change out the battery. So the dual batteries are kind of cool. Because of the dual batteries, you get a 35 minute flight time. So it gives you tons of time to do inspections on long lines or high towers or under long bridges. Um, and again, there's two versions of the battery. I don't have the specs in front of me, but there's a smaller version of the battery and a larger version of the battery. If you use the larger version, 35 minutes is about the flight time. It's got crash avoidance built into it. So there's three sets of sensors. There's a front facing set of sensors. There's a down facing set of sensors that'll actually do crash avoidance. And there's an upward facing infrared sensor as well. So you've got really three directional um, protection 
protection, if you will, from crashes, which is good because you're gonna be sometimes in confined spaces under bridges or whatever you happen to be inspecting. It's got a system built in called AirSense, which is a trademark from DJI. And what that is, is an ADS-B receiver. And again, if you're not familiar with that technology, I'll just give you a brief overview of it. What it is, is a beacon system that actually marks your position three-dimensionally as a GPS coordinate, and then broadcasts that to other aircraft in the area. That's super important if you're doing remote sensing of lines and you're not actually in visual line of sight, because other aircraft will know exactly where that drone is, and they can do avoidance. They can keep that separation distance that's mandatory. So having an inner is pretty cool. The body itself is a semi-folding body. Now they call it a folding body, but really what it is are four arms that come out with the propellers on them that fold in flat and it sits inside of a really nice case. So it comes with a nice carrying case. When you pull it out of the case, you're going to fold the arms out a little bit and then you'll be ready to fly and you can snap two feet on it, which are the landing gear. So it is a foldable solution that takes a couple of minutes to break it down and set it up, which means you can take it to any remote location and use it almost immediately when you pull it out of the case. I talked before about the RTK modules. Those RTK modules are kind of genius technology because they, they use beacons to sort of exactly position where that quad is in a three-dimensional space. And on the uh, M210 RTK module, those mount on the top. So it gives you extremely accurate, pinpoint accurate positioning of where that quad is. There's a ton of redundancy built in. There's over 20 sensors built into this quad. So again, very intelligent platform. The redundancy built into it, in addition to the batteries, are things like the barometer, the compass, the IMU, there's dual IMUs in there. If one of the IMUs gets flaky, the other one will take over. It's got dual GPS coordination built into it. So this thing is built for some serious business. It's built to last, it's built to be redundant, and just to do its job, which is really great. As far as the software goes, you can control this with the standard DJI Go 4 application. You can also use Ground Station Pro if you'd like to use that instead. The Lightbridge 2 technology is your connection topology between the quad and your controller, which means you're going to get incredibly rock solid streaming video so you can see exactly what you're looking at. Your telemetry information will be guaranteed to get to the quad. So it's a it's an upgrade from the old Lightbridge technology, which gives you a choice between the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz banding, sort of like what they do with some of the quads that are out now in the consumer space. And that's nice because if you're in an area, an urban area, where you've got a lot of uh, interference from Wi-Fi and other sources of noise, you can switch between the 2.4 and the 5.8. So that's really good. Now, the platform will support four different cameras. It'll support all the cameras that are out for the Inspire today. So the X4S, which is the one inch sensor with the 20 megapixel camera, which is a phenomenal camera, that'll snap on there and you get some great video from that. You can also use the X5S, which is the micro four thirds camera that'll have lenses attached to the front. So you can put lenses on there and zero in and get some really good, you know, zoom in with the lenses or wide angle lenses, whatever you need. The Z30 camera will fit on there as well. And that's the zoom camera. And that's actually got a 30X optical zoom and a 6x digital zoom so that allows you to stay far enough away from a situation so let's say you're inspecting power lines you don't want to get too close because obviously it'll destroy the drone but if you stay far enough away you can actually zoom in with that camera to get incredibly detailed views of exactly what's going on up there then the last camera that'll fit is the xt thermal imaging camera that's got the FLIR technology in it and that does the thermal imaging so if you're flying that at night and you fly over an area of the woods you'll see heat signatures from animals and people that are down there so those search and rescue missions will really benefit from that so that's the basics of the quad I'm talking now to the consumers out there. I know you don't care about commercial drones, but if you're a consumer drone guy, there are some technologies buried in this that I would love to see move over to the consumer space. The first one has to do with the removable gimbal. I would love to have a quad in the Phantom class that had a removable gimbal so I could change out different cameras as I needed to. I could put a FLIR on it, maybe a 360 camera, maybe one with a zoom on it. I think that technology now has been proven out in the Inspire, it's now on the M200. I wouldn't be surprised if that makes its way down to the Phantom platform down the road. The dual batteries are super cool. I mean, having dual batteries in there not only, like I said before, gives you longer distances, but it's got redundancy built in because I always worry about single points of failure in these platforms, and that battery is a single point of failure. As smart as it is and well-designed as it is, if that fails, that drone's coming down. So having two batteries in there gives me extended flight times, and it also gives me redundancy to protect that quad. The weather resistance is nice. That's not a breaker a make or break feature, but having weather resistance when I'm flying my com my consumer drone down at the shore or maybe a light drizzle, knowing that I'm not gonna destroy the drone is really nice. So I think that weatherproofing that's now in the M200 may make its way down to the consumer drone as well. The folding frame is nice. Even if the frame folds a little bit, it gives me that transportability of the quad, which makes it easier to take it with me. So maybe you'll see that there. The last thing that I think will make its way into the higher end of the consumer drone space is the AirSense, the ADS, uh, dash B receiver, which allows the broadcast of where that quad is to all the other aircraft in the area, which gives them notice that there's a quad near and they can exactly fix its position based on that transceiver. So anyway, that's what I wanted to do today was just give you a broad overview of what's involved with this M200 quad. I think it represents 
a major step forward for commercial quads. I think that they've really spent a lot of time thinking about what commercial operators are going to need for this, whether they're doing inspections or they're doing data collection out there. There's a software development kit out as well, so you'll probably see software developers building very specialized applications that use this platform over time. I'm sure that's their hope to build an ecosystem of applications that'll use this frame to do a lot of other specialized things. So I didn't want to go on too long. I just wanted to give you an overview. And again, I will do a much more detailed review once I've had a chance to drink all the information in and really understand it better. And if I get my hands on one, I'll tear it apart and give you some, some engineering approach to what's inside that quad. But that's pretty much it for today. Now, if I've missed anything or you have questions, please drop them below. Um, I'm more than happy to answer what I can of those questions. Uh, if you like the clip, give me a thumbs up. You know, if you've got comments, good or bad, put them down below as well. And please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing a ton more clips on all the DJI products. So I'll give you a much deeper, uh, you know, view of what's going on inside those technologies. So again, thanks an awful lot for watching. Hope you guys are having a great day and as always, happy flying. Thank you.